Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. My name is Rick and I appreciate you tuning in. If you happen to watch my last uh, video, the update on the 911, you knew that I have a box of parts to put on the Porsche. And as you can see by how messy I am, I just spent about three hours um, yesterday afternoon and this morning finishing it up, installing the uh, coffin arm, control arms in the front, and also the tuning fork or wishbone as well. Now this is not a bad job. Uh, I'm no mechanic. But uh, this is seriously very straightforward and easy to do. The only real issue I had was, number one, getting the clips off of the large plastic protection that's under the car. It just took me a while to figure out how to get those out of there. And then on the passenger side, I actually had to go rent a ball joint uh, separator because that one would not come off. One of the issues I also ran into is the fact that I don't really have a torque wrench that will fit in a couple of the spots, so I had to kind of wing that. But stay tuned. In the video, I will have uh, a photograph of all the torque numbers that I gleaned off of Renlist. And again, use, it, use those at your own risk, but um, I trust those guys over there, and apparently they do come straight from the manual. So at least if you have the appropriate torque wrench, you'll be able to do it completely to the spec. But... Um, Anyway, taking a look at these real quick. These are these are very trash, and I'll show you a little bit more of that later. But uh, I'm thinking these are probably original. But there's a lot of movement, and the the ball joint itself um, moves pretty freely, especially when compared to the new ones. So I'm not going to do a full-on step-by-step wrenching video. What I'm going to do is basically show you what you need to take off, um, any pitfalls or tips and tricks that I can help you with. Um, I'll show you those as well and we'll go that route. It's not, again, it's not a difficult job to do. It's just some, a few nuts and bolts. So let's get started on that. And if you guys have questions or comments, you can leave those below. I'm happy to uh, help out in any way I can. And at the end, I'll take it for a drive and see if I've gotten rid of the little bit of uh, clunking noise I have slow speed over bumps and that's really what kind of started this whole thing i also have if you remember from the last video i have the inner and outer tie rods that i did, am not going to do today or i did not do um, i'm going to start with these control arms and then work on the tie rods after that while we're here i want to show you one other little issue if you have the electronic headlights that's this little module here it has this little like in link looking guy and it has this little bracket, and I can't tell if mine was broken or not, but this little guy right here um, comes off of the old control arm, and it looks like it's kind of a press fit. So when I pulled that, that out, it obviously broke off the little parts that keep it in the hole. Um, so what I did is I used some rubber to fill the hole, and I put some silicone, and I stuck this in here in lieu of going to the dealership and trying to hunt down that part. Um, basically this, the way it was, this just was resting on top of there. So as soon as that silicone dries, it should be totally fine and I will address that at a later time when I do the tie rods. I'll try to get that part ordered. But this will get me going for now. Um, so keep that in mind if you have electronic lights. That's something you'll have to deal with. Again, mine just came right off. Let's go over real quick what tools that you're going to need. Torque wrench, half inch. I used a half inch breaker bar, 16 millimeter wrench, 16 millimeter socket, 18 millimeter wrench, 18 millimeter socket, a 21 millimeter wrench or socket if you can get it on there, and then just a, a half inch standard socket. The T40 Torx if you have the Mile part or it looks like an Allen if you have a standard Porsche part. Screwdriver to get the clips off the plastic panel that's underneath the car and then the uh, ball joint separator all right so as I mentioned in the parts list I've got these are the obviously the outer tie rods the inners are in here this is the wishbone control arm that we're gonna change out and then this is what I'm referring to as the coffin arm this guy down here we're gonna have to take this large plastic protector off as well just so we can get in here to these bolts and nuts so there's six of these clips you have to get out and go in these various spots. So I've got to get the one on the other side. And then there's 10 millimeter there and on the other side 
And there's a 10 millimeter right here and on the other side. Okay, so I don't know if this is the original. I mean, I expected this rubber to be more trash than it is. I mean, it's not split or cracked or anything. You know, judging by the look of this thing, it looks like it's been in there quite some time. It does have the original 996 numbering. It says made in Germany. So I don't know if anybody watching can tell me if that's the original part or not, but that being said, I mean, you can see how compliant this is. Whereas the new one, you can't move it at all. So that's pretty cool. Uh, definitely a necessary change. Let me get the uh, little plastic piece off here and then I'll give you a little bit better comparison. So you get an idea of the melee part and the original part. And they're pretty darn close. It's hard to say, but weight wise, I don't have a little scale, but this might be a tad heavier, just a tad, it's not much. But it is interesting to see how movable that is. I mean, to be honest with you, <laughs> I, I've always felt like my car was handled just fine for its age and for, you know, knowing that it probably had obviously original suspension parts. But seeing this leads me to believe that I'm going to be very happy when I get these changed out. Okay, so no room in here to get sockets, so we've got a 18 and a 16. Now, before we pull that out, I want to figure out how to get this little guy out of here and get this little boss thing out of here. Okay, so that's easy. It just pulls up and out. We just don't want to break that anyway. We protect it. So there's a little boss. So that, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but we'll have to we'll have to move this over to the other control arm once we get this out of here. So I'm just gonna put that up there on the sway bar, and then we'll continue on. These are toast. These guys are toast. All right, so that's an 18 right here. And you can see there's a little Allen nut in the middle of that. If it starts spinning when you're spinning the outside 18, you're gonna have to hold that with the Allen and then loosen it. 
Mine is actually coming off without having to uh, put the little Allen key in there. And one of the things I discovered, and this is a newbie mistake, is leave the bolt in here um, while you're trying to loosen this nut. Otherwise, you just have no leverage. This just moves around. That was stupid on my part, so I stuck the bolt back in. But uh, we'll see if I'm just going to knock this a little bit, just see if it'll come out. Otherwise, I'll grab the uh, ball joint tool and get that out of there. All right, I don't know if it's my lucky day or what, but this just... I wiggled this like five times and it just dropped out. I didn't even need the ball joint tool. So, again, made in Germany. I'm assuming this is original. I don't have any information in my paperwork that these were changed out. And this looks like there's basically nothing left. Um, as far as the... I mean, it's actually not like floppy but i can easily move it around whereas on the new one protective cap but on this one it actually takes a decent amount of pressure to move this around and here's a little difference too that looks like an allen to me and this looks like a star so yeah Super easy to move. Definitely takes more pressure to move that one around. And this rubber here, just, it's just like totally flat. And there's not a whole lot of to it here either, but the bushing in there, I'm not sure really how I can t test that. Maybe put a screwdriver and try to move it, but Again, as far as size goes, these are very comparable. They look almost identical. Weight-wise. The melee on this one, Miley, however you pronounce it, I apologize if I'm pronouncing it wrong. This one feels heavier. It's not significant, but it is a little bit heavier. Wrong one. There we go. <laughs> I think sneaking on there that way. There we go. So we're going to start tightening things up. This is the the nut, or I'm sorry, this is the bolt that connects the wishbone or tuning fork to the subframe. It's an 18 millimeter. We're just going to get it tight, and then I'll use the torque wrench to tighten it to 118. This guy here is actually a 16 millimeter, and it is 78 foot pounds. Okay. Switch over to our 16. Adjust the torque wrench to 78. 78. This guy also is 118. And so if you remember, it's an 18 underneath and a 22 on the top. Eight. 
18. All right, so now we just have the nut here on top of the ball joint for the coffin arm. And uh, as I mentioned, I think earlier in the video, it's actually a Torx. It's not an Allen key on these Miley or Melee versions of the coffin arm. All right, so these are the torque values that I gleaned off the internet. So use these at your own risk. Please try to get your own numbers, but just to give you an idea what I did, you're gonna need a T40 to go in here when you tighten this nut up on the ball joint. This is supposed to be 56 foot pounds. Okay, I could not get a torque wrench on there. So I did my best guesstimate. 118 for this guy that goes through the tuning fork. This is 78, okay, on the bracket. 118 here, supposed to be 89. This is 89, but I don't have a way to measure it with my torque wrench, it doesn't fit in here. So they do make a little thing that connects to a block wrench, like I said, so maybe I could get one of those and try it, but uh, they're snugged. So let's talk real quick about the uh, ball joint separator. The driver's side basically just fell out after I twisted it around a few times. The passenger side gave me some difficulty. I could not get it out. Um, people talk about hitting the knuckle or you can put the screw on top of the bolt and then kind of try to knock it out. Uh, mine was not moving, so I went and I rented this from AutoZone. It's like 34 bucks. Uh, there is a Porsche Audi specific one that I found online. It looked pretty expensive. It was like anywhere from 160 to $200. Probably because it has the Porsche Audi name on it. But essentially what you do is this goes under, I guess, the knuckle. And you screw this down so that the the ball joint the threaded part of the ball joint goes here and then as you tighten it it pushes it out and if you've never done it before like i had never done this before um, there's a pretty good clunk when it comes free scared the heck out of my wife it was pretty funny she was out here helping me so <laughs> i got to chuckle out of that but you can see there's two positions on this one that i have and i needed the wider jaws so i had to go up here so let me give you an idea what that looks like so here's the the uh when we're talking about basically I'm not going to shove it in there because of the new boot on the on the uh, new control arm but this shoves up under here you put that on top like that and then you just crank the nut down it'll pop obviously with the, uh, the nut nut on there and it'll just pop it out the bottom so we're going to wrap this up here essentially I can tell you that uh, this is really not a difficult job. I've done some jobs on here that have been a real pain and in, uh, including the coils and plugs and then removing the alternator to get to the oil filler tube. That was not fun at all. This is actually a really quick job. I think, you know, somebody that knows what they're doing could do this in an hour, I bet. It's not very difficult. Um, you know, really it took the longest to get the car up on the, the jack stand and to get that plastic cover off the bottom because I didn't really know how to use or how to remove those clips. So I'm gonna get this other wheel on and I'm gonna take this guy out for a drive and see if it's affected my clunk at all, if it's gotten rid of it. Um, and I think I'm gonna to have to order some shocks and I'm gonna go with the uh, original Bilstens, the B4s is what they are. Even though they're more expensive, it seems like than the B6s or B8s. All right, so I'll check in in a little bit. So we're gonna take the car just a very easy drive around the neighborhood and I'm just going to see if I can hear any clunking. underneath yet so I don't want to get too crazy but we're gonna drive 
usually I hear it right away in my very cruddy street that's here in my neighborhood. So let's see if we can see if I hear any inklings of it. I don't hear anything. And it appeared that my little silicone fix for the electronic mounting post or whatever you want to call it seems like that was working pretty well i like i said earlier i will go to the dealership and try to buy that part so i can do it correctly but at least this gets me on the road and i can try stuff out and see where i'm at and then decide if i want to do those uh tie rods or not Alright, so I'm not hearing it now. That may change when I go out on the main road and pick up some other bumpier roads and maybe some more speed, but so far I think we, we might have gotten the problem. As you saw in the video, those uh, control arms are all pretty worn out. And there's just tons of movement. No stiffness left in them at all. So I'm not sure which ones were the culprit, but uh, had to have been had to have been one of them. So Alright guys, it's a couple days later. I just took the car out for a longer drive. I actually went over to the Porsche dealer to order that small little piece for the uh, electronic leveling system. Got that ordered, it was only about five bucks. Um, the rattle definitely, or the clunk is definitely gone. Not noticing that, just hearing the other clunks and rattles that the car has. But the, um, the one I've been talking about is finally gone. I'm very happy about that. Um, I can't say that there's any dramatic change as far as uh, steering feel goes, but I took it very easy because I want to wait until I get everything torqued to spec before I really ring the car out. I did also order that little, it's an add-on for a box wrench that allows you to use your torque wrench so I can get those other bolts torqued properly, uh, the ones that I could not reach that you saw in the video. Once I get that all squared away, I get the little piece for the electronic lights on there, and then I'll take the car up Mount Lemon and really let you know how it does. But as far as the clunk, that's definitely gone, so that's cool. Um, I still will do the tie rods here in the next couple of weeks probably, so I'll get a video on that. But uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Any questions, comments below as usual. Uh, my email will be in the description, so if you wanna just email me directly, I respond to everything. So hope you guys are doing well, and we'll talk at you soon. Thanks for watching.